devastating wildfires in the back garden. This was the heat brought by climate change scientists had long warned of, and yet still nobody seemed to expect. Last Tuesday, temperatures of just over 40 degrees Celsius broke the previous UK temperature record by one and a half degrees. Scientists now say all heat waves like this are made more intense by climate change, and this week warned that we could be headed toward widespread drought by August. The Met Office today published its annual report on last year's climate, much of it confirming what we already know. The climate isn't just going to change, it already has. Today in its report, the Met Office made clear that yes, each year there is variation in average temperatures. And actually, 2021 was not particularly hot compared to recent years. But it's when you look back at the long-term context, and there's data going all the way to the 1880s, that you see this clear trend of man-made global heating. Our perception of normal has shifted. Last year's maximum temperature of 32 degrees may now seem unremarkable. But if it had occurred before 1990, it would have been the second hottest in 100 years. If we compare the most recent decade against 1961-1990, we've had one degree of warming. That is broadly comparable to what we've seen globally. Now, one degree might not sound much, but what does that mean? Well, clearly we are going to expect more heat waves, more extremes of temperature and, in fact, rainfall too. Separate research published earlier this month said that the heat waves in Europe are increasing by up to four times faster than elsewhere in part due to changes in the jet stream which help regulate northern latitudes. But it's not just heat which the climate is changing, it's Britain's coastline too. The Met Office says the sea around the UK is now rising by three to five millimetres each year, more than double the rate a century ago. It may not sound like much, but couple it with extreme events like last year's storm Arwen, which are only set to increase, then the risk is a brutal remoulding of landscapes and their communities. A better understanding of how severe these changes will be is crucial if we're to adapt, which is why along the coast at Southampton, scientists at the National Oceanography Centre are heading to the subpolar North Atlantic for answers. So this research expedition, which is leaving on the James Cook behind me, is setting out to measure uh, the subpolar North Atlantic gyre. This is a system of currents that's bringing really warm, salty water from the tropics up to the northeastern part of the Atlantic. Some scientists are concerned about the changes they're seeing in these ocean currents that regulate much of Europe's temperate weather. If these systems did collapse, much of the climate change we see now would look minor. But first, researchers need more data to understand the risk of passing a so-called tipping point, where a small change suddenly cascades irreversibly out of control. The data this expedition will collect is simple. Ocean temperature, oxygen, fresh water and more. These things are really important because they tell us something about uh, how the currents are changing over time, how carbon is being sequestered over time, and all of these things uh, that we've all heard about in the news are really important for how our climate, our system is, our climate system is changing and adapting to changes that are associated with anthropogenic climate change. For scientists studying the climate crisis, some details do remain unknown, but the big picture is clear. The world needs to reduce its dependence on fossil fuels and lower its emissions fast, or this tide of climate impacts will keep rising.